Oh, I look terrible. Hello, everybody. This is Tiffany with The Private Room. And tonight we have a special episode that we are going to be debuting tonight. It is the PR King's Table. So this panel is made up of only men. So only men, all professional men, all community leaders, all men that are business owners and all that great stuff. So um, we started the panel, the all-male panel, when um, I was doing my podcast before on the Speak Up and Inspire series. We talked about um, different topics like fatherhood, um, daughters and, and fathers, um, how to lead your community, being mentors as men. And so I wanted to continue doing that on the, the, uh, on the private room. I think it's really important that we have men that are out in the community making a difference and that we as women are supporting these men, but even more importantly is the positive effects that as a teacher and being in the education system, but also being a therapist is seeing the big difference that men have on our children. Yes, ladies, we do make a difference. We are natural nurturers. We are natural leaders as well, but there is a big difference when our men are in the schools or they're out in the community and they are connecting with our kids. So because I'm a mother, I think it's really important that we bring this panel back. Um, we have two returning um, members from the previous panel and then we have um, two uh, new members on the panel that you are gonna meet tonight. And tonight we're really just gonna get to know um, all of the men on the panel so that you can know what you have to look forward to. And then going forward, we are going to have the men's panel every single month. And that is going to be, and let me make sure before I say the wrong thing, because I did change it. So it is going to be every third Monday of the month. So starting tonight, every third Monday of the month, we are gonna have the men's panel. So that gives you something to look forward to. And if you are a man yourself, and you're a professional, you're a business owner, you're a community leader, all that great stuff, please reach out to me if you would like to be a guest on the men's panel or the at the King's Table. So we're going to just jump right in. I'm going to be sharing this to my personal Facebook page as well as Urban City Connects um, group, which is a networking group that has over 700 members right now. And then our panelists are also going to be sharing it on their page as well so that you will be able to see exactly how to reach them. We're also gonna be putting their social media links throughout the interview um, today and throughout the panel today in the comments as well. So that way you are able to connect with them so that you can really get to know all of the, the panelists that we are going to be bringing to you every month here on the PR. So what I would like to do is we're gonna do a round table of introductions. Um, we're gonna start with our previous members that joined us on the Speak Up and Inspire series. And that means that we're gonna be starting off with Mr. JT Thompson and Mr. C. Dwayne Hennett. So Mr. JT, you have hosted with me plenty of times before. You were just on with me a couple of weeks ago. So so please start us out. Tell us about you. Tell us what you do in the community. Tell us about your businesses and all that good stuff. Well, I'm grateful um, to be a part of this King's Table on the panel. Uh, James J.T. Thompson, uh, co-founder of Big Woo Radio, um, also activist in the community. Um, and what can I say? Just um, being a motivation uh, to our youth, our, our children. Um, is reaching back in, um, as well as, you know, um, women as well, just, you know, uh, being an example, leadership, stepping up into the, uh, the gap, whether it be prayer, whether it be, you know, inspiring. Um, I'm also a poet, I'm an author, uh, I do a lot of stuff. Um, but, but what's near and dear to the heart is being a King's kid, a child of God, and being able to move on purpose and off of purpose and moving in, in, in a manner that um, is, you know, you, you're not gonna leave the same way. Like everybody that's viewing right now, you're not gonna leave this, this show tonight the same way that you came. You will be inspired, you will be impacted. These kings that are on this panel tonight, each of them bring their own skill set and diversity to it and their impact as well. I'm just one of, of, of these kings at the table tonight. But sit back, enjoy, pay attention. There's a lot of gems and wisdom that's going to be dropped here tonight. 
Yes, yes. Thank you so much. You always give amazing introductions and closings as well. So thank you so much, JT. Um, Mr. Dwayne Hennett, please introduce yourself and tell everybody who you are, what you do, what you do in the community and all that great stuff. Um, C. Dwayne Hennett, author of The Ripple Effect, The Lasting Effects of Domestic Violence. I'm an mm -hmm. author, advocate um, for domestic violence. I'm also advocate for homelessness. Um, mental illness, um, sexual assault, and human trafficking. Um, I, this is my many times that I've done a program with uh, Tiffany. Um, mm -hmm. I always love to get back and do these kind of things is because it's important that, especially men, that we talk about certain issues, certain issues that need to be talked about from a man's perspective. Um, and also just to give men's insight um, on how that affects us and how that affects our community and how we can change it. So I'm all about change. I'm all about making my community better. So this is one of the reasons why I'm here. Yes, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, to our new um, members, now they're not they're not new to the PR or the Speak Up and Inspire series, but they are new to our King's Table. And so um, I want to welcome um, Delvon to the um, King's Table and also Vincent as well. So Vincent, please tell us and introduce yourself. Tell us who you are, what you do, what you do in the community and all that great stuff. How's it going? I'm, uh, I'm Vincent Baldwin. Um, I live in Charlotte. Um, I am the owner of Baldwin's Touch Media Photography and Videography. Um, as far as the community, I'm also a foster parent. Um, I love what I do as far as that goes. My son is my biggest motivation. Uh, he's also adopted. He's We've had him since he was three, but he's 12, so he's mine. And um, just making sure that he does right, um, be a great person, you know, be a great person growing up and passing on some of the things that he's learned that I can teach him, you know, and not just him. If I see any young man or any young lady that just needs someone to talk to or someone to inspire, you know, it's all about, you know, find one, teach one. You can't teach them all, but if you can get one, my whole thing is if you can get one and you see some change, then you can, then, then, then I feel positive. You know, I take him everywhere with me. I take him everywhere with me so you know i look to bring him around other positive people to learn from get his head out those video games and put your head in a book you know so i'm just here to learn and grow with others and pass on any knowledge and experiences that i may have to help others yes thank you i appreciate that um uh vincent is also the godfather of my little mini me uh zz and he um just loves and adores her so um vincent is an amazing person um he is definitely a good role model for um my little one and also his as well and i just really appreciate the fact that he is giving his family um and opening up his home to children who really need it because there's so many children that are in the system so welcome to the king's table and um thank you for coming i appreciate you being on with us for the first time on the king's table um mr dell i don't see you are you able to talk yeah i'm right here i'm right here i'm, I'm okay. almost home to get situated hello right. everyone my name is huh go ahead go ahead and introduce yourself <laughs> hello my name is devon harling i am a uh, educator in richland county school district one richland school district one i'm also a dj and uh, the reason why I'm here is, is basically I I echo everything every man on this panel has said. You know, I'm for the community, I'm by the community, and I'm around the community each and every day with a whole lot of 14, 14 through 18 year olds trying to get them to understand that life is coming very fast and you have to have the tools and the abilities to be able to produce out here in this world. Now, just like Vincent just said, it only takes one to inspire. And that's what we, as a, as this whole panel, would like to do, just inspire one. And one will plant that seed, and that seed will grow, hopefully, into a nice big tree where we can all just be able to help the community, help the community grow. Because what we're seeing right now is a whole lot of anger, a whole lot of despair, a whole lot of mental health issues. So if we can be the olive branch and if we can lend a helping hand if we can just inspire someone then you know it it only takes one man that can change the world 
And I believe that you have a, a, a full panel here that is willing to accept that challenge to help change the world. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Um, Dell has a very inspirational story that um, we are definitely going to get into. Um, he is a re uh, um, mm, kidney recipient. And um, that is something that I and social media, um, the radio outlets, uh, his Columbia, South Carolina community and so forth um, were there throughout that whole process for him. Um, it was pretty scary as his friend to watch it, but I also was able to see him, you know, go through um, just life changes and having that reality check and being able to rise above it, being able to get that transplant and now seeing him healthy and striving. So um, he's gonna be sharing his um, personal story uh, with us in an upcoming ep special episode. And so I really appreciate you coming on and sharing, um, not only you know being an educator, but also sharing your personal story as well with us. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Dion, hello. How are you, Dion? How you doing, guys? How you doing, Kings, man, I say? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can't see you. Are you able to come onto the camera? Oh, you can't see me? Oh, there you go. We can see you now. Hi there, you have been on with us before um, on the Speak Up and Inspire series. So thank you for coming back and joining us on the King's Table. So tell us about you, tell us about your businesses, what you do in the community and all that great stuff. Okay, um, I'm mm -hmm. gonna just simplify uh, things. I'm the jack of all trade, master of none. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, however, um, my passion is in the youth actually and with people with, um, that deal with substance abuse and uh, mental health or dual diagnosis. Um, that's my passion. And why them things are my passion? Because that's part of me. That's all that's part of my story. Um, when it comes to addiction and it comes to mental health and it comes to a troubled childhood. So I just took the tools that I feel like I needed at that point in time in my life and kind of drew a passion towards helping people so they wouldn't be in that same mindset. They have an outlet, someone to talk to, or someone that really understood. Uh, so that's how I began uh, my nonprofit. It's called Faye is Not an Option Organization, uh, where we mentor kids from 13 to 19. We focus on conflict resolution, in which we know, fellas, that that's something that's really big um, because there is no human communication now. Everything is done over the over the internet or through text. So mm -hmm. when they get into an um, uh, uncomfortable situation, it's like they resort to violence or because um, they don't have no communication skills uh, and personal development. And I feel it's important to teach these young men personal development so they'll feel good about themselves, um, no matter the circumstances that they come from. And the thing that I wasn't taught in school that I added to my program was economic education. Uh, because we could be educated on how to handle finances. That's something I was never taught. Uh, when I started making a little money, I blew through it. <laughs> I blew through it real <laughs> fast because I didn't have, and, I, and I'm still, that's something that I still work on because of bad habits I was taught. I was always taught that you have extra. If you pay your bills, and you have something left over, you have extra. No, that's money that you should save. That's what I know as an adult. You don't really have extra. You just have something that you can save. Uh, so that's that. Um, that was my passion where I gave in to the community through the mentorship. But however, um, I had took a, took a step back from that uh, because it's very draining. Um, you have to be a special person to do it, and it's. And I started feeling like I was having an uphill battle by fighting with the parents. Um, they weren't consistent. We, we, um, we pour into this youth, they go home, it's the same old mess. And you know the parents aren't supporting us and helping them grow in a lot of the situ situations that we had. Uh, but um, that's pretty much my story. And the New per Perspective Solutions, um, that's where we focus on mental health and substance abuse because that's part of me too as well. Um, uh, alcoholic and um, manic depressant, along with um, 
a lot of other things. Uh, but um, you, you guys get the gist of what I'm what I'm saying. Uh, so I knew what was missing in that aspect to be productive coming from that environment and from that situation. So I just added it into a program. Right. I'm not trying to take up too much time, so I'm. No, you've got plenty of time. So you can keep going if you want. So this is what this is about. You all being able to introduce yourselves so people can get to know y'all. So you can talk until you you're ready to get finished. <laughs> it's all about you, King. It's all about you, King, tonight. <laughs> I can get long winded. So I, uh... <laughs> well, we're gonna come back to passions. That's gonna be the next. My gonna be my next question. So we will circle back. Um, we have uh, Jay Lock on us with tonight. Jay Lock. Are you on camera to be able for us to be able to see your face? Yes. Um, can can you guys not see me? Yep, we can see you now. Okay. Yes. Bless Tell me. us about you. Tell us about your business, your passions, and all that great stuff. Uh, so for those who don't know, my name is Jay Lock. Um, recording artist, entrepreneur, um, songwriter. We've got a lot of hats going on. Um, my passions are us. I'm, I'm, I'm about us. I'm about um, our culture, our people. I'm about um, pushing us forward. Yes, 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 you are. Um, I know uh, I've been following you for a few years and um, we were first introduced, I actually think by JT. Um, so <laughs> um, we have a lot of, uh connections and yeah yeah um so jt introduced us um i was looking for artists for the speak up and inspire series um and then also um jt has been um uh, very helpful in helping me with getting guests on the show and so forth and you were one of those guests so um we have a lot of connections on here tonight um i know that um a couple of you already know each other some of you are learning each other for the first time and meeting each other for the first time um but that's what it, this is all about i really wanted a platform for all of our kings to be able to talk um i just saw a little comment someone said hey you didn't invite me well guess what if you want to be on a guest or on the King's panel or on the at the King's table, please make sure that you message me so that we can get you on. That's what this is about. We're networking, we're uplifting one another. So um, I know with you, uh, JT, you have uh, Alpha by J Lock and your recording artist. So tell me, how has that been for you when it comes to, especially Alpha um, by J Lock, starting your business and being able to connect with other men in the community? Um, how has that been for you and how do you see that as being a leader in your community? So when we when we started um, Alpha by J Lock, we I started kind of how I, I started with the music industry. Um, my business model has always been to hit the streets and just kind of, that's a, a fair assessment. That's what you want to know what you really got. The streets they don't care about your feelings. They don't care about, you know, if, it, if, you, if you're rocking, they rocking with you. If you're not, they're going to let you know, go back, try it again, come back through. And um, I literally remember going out and um, <clears throat> Kind of just hitting the streets and, and, and just stopping people. Well, Alpha by J Lock, it started out with the beard, beard line. It was doing the beard product. Um, it didn't really materialize into something else until we actually opened up a kiosk in the mall. And then we had to modify it and add more products. And eventually we added um, a female line as well. But um, I, I learned two important rules or lessons in business working in that kind of environment. Um, one, you know, the people will love you if you love them back. It don't matter if it's a pastor, if it's a gang member, if it's a drug dealer, if it's a homeless person, they're gonna rock with you if you rock with them. And okay. the second lesson I learned is our people can also be the destruction of something of, of your business or your dream. Like you have that duality going on where your people will love you, but they also can hurt you. And, um, but it's two 
sets to people. It's just, it's just like you have your, your, your people that have genuine love for you. And then it's the people that surround you because of what they can take and what they can get or what they can gain from you. And um, those are the people you got to watch. So um, that was kind of the, the most valuable lesson I learned. Yes, I, I totally and 100% agree with you that there are always going to be those people who sincerely and genuinely rock with you, like you said. And then there's going to be those people that you're going to have to watch out for because they're only looking, looking out to see when you're going to fail and how you're going to fail. Um, so I, I definitely agree with you on that one. And you're, we're going to have a special episode with you later on to talk about uh, a little bit of the you know, things that went on with you and that uh, kiosk of yours and your business. So we're going to have a special episode about that. We have a lot of different topics that are going to come just, just out of this King's table because all of y'all have a story. All of y'all have something to talk about. Um, and so I'm going to keep saying, yes, we're going to be talking about this later. We're going to talk about that later. Things that's already been scheduled um, because you have a big story to tell. And I, I can't wait for us to be able to share it. Right now it's confidential. We can't say too much, but trust me, it's something that when uh, when Jay is able to talk about it, it's going to be something that everybody's going to want to hear. So thank you for sharing. I, um, I appreciate that. Um, Vincent. Share with us uh, what your passion is, something that you want to be able to share um, on this panel that is important to you. And tell me where it comes from. What's the background of it? I would have to say, just like the, just like the rest of the, the, the kings at this, at this call here, my passion is for the youth. You know, it's, it's, it's not a good time across the world for our youth right now. Um, Social media has been taken in a bad way. You know, instead of sitting out talking things out, you can't text it. You can't text emotion out like that. You can't do that. You, you can't do that. That's not solving a conflict that you're having with someone at school, you know. And a lot of these kids, they're looking for their parents to step up or someone to love them. I get it. We have to go to work every day. I get it. I do, but are we so caught up with coming home and decompressing with Facebook? Are we so caught up with decompressing with Instagram and worried about everything else that we can't sit and take five minutes or 10 minutes to have dinner with our child and talk to me? What's going on? What's going on? How was your day at school? We still can't take five to 10 minutes to, on our lunch break or whatever, pop up at the school, talk to those teachers. You know, that's my passion. And I see that because that's what I have to do with my son. And I'm, I'm some may say I'm extremely, I might be too tight on him, but I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that because, you know, no one's going to knock at your door and say, here, this is what you need to do. And especially in the black community with black men, a lot of us would love to come together and sit and have these talks about how we can do things better with our children. Not just sit and vent about the problem. We don't want to vent about the problem. We know what the problem is. Now it's time to, now it's time to come up with solutions to encourage positive change. If I could somehow, like I said, I don't, I don't have a big business, but a way I could contrib contribute is I could bring my camera to an organization if we had something. Kids love technology. I'm also a drone pilot. You know, let them see that. Then this is what I do with my son. Everyone's can't. Everyone's not going to be a ball player. Everyone's not going to be a rapper. But at the end of the day, this is something that you can have that will prevent you from going out and breaking in someone's car. This is a way of you can that you can make some money without selling something illegal. And it's going to teach you the value of hard work. And that's my passion. I mean, I love children. I do. And the family aspect of it, there's, there's not a lot of Black fathers in the same house. There is, but there isn't. And even if they're not in the same house, you have to be there in more ways than just financial ways. These kids need us. They need us. They're crying for us. And 
I'll be the first to admit that I didn't understand the language that they're saying, but guess what? It still goes back to the language that was spoke to us, but in a different way. We put our own spin to it and somehow get to these kids. Yeah, sometimes they need a, a, a hug and yeah, man, you got this, you good. And sometimes they need them 13s that we wear on our feet right up their butt and let them know, hey, you slip, you, you slap, you slipping, son. You're slipping. But come over here, let me let, let me tell you what you need to do and let's work on this together. And the um, a job that I used to have, I used to be a personal banker. I used to be a banker uh, for one of the banks here. And I I thought I would like it, but I, I absolutely hated it. I hated it. But the one thing I loved about that job is that I could help a teenager establish their first savings account. And then someone just spoke on it, teaching them about building credit early, starting that conversation early and watching it grow. Started early. He mentioned it, and I had a good point with me. Thank you so much. That was a lot of gems you just dropped. And I'm taking notes because I want us to be able to follow up in, because we got a, a whole year of, of panels to do. And I'm excited to make sure that we're hitting on all of the things that y'all are passionate about right here. So, and I didn't I cut you off, but... Mm -hmm. to the room and anybody else you know it's going to go beyond this panel right here i would like to connect with all of y'all summertime's coming i live in we can sit in the backyard we can do whatever pour a glass and build as black men and really talk about what we can do for our kids if not our kids nephews nieces not just the boys the girls too because it's out of control the girls too they need us in a major, major way. They need us. So true. And I, the person in here is ready to answer that call. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And he has a nice backyard too. Nice for, for chilling and relaxing and having a good conversation. <laughs> and I, yeah. I'm cameras and we can we can put the whole thing on video, man. I'm I'm into it. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I love it. I love it. Um, I'm going to go back to Dion because he said he shared that passion with you about working with you. So tell us a little about your story, Dion, and and tell us more about that the passion that you were talking about when it comes to helping you. And just just give us some insight on where this comes from for you. For me, it, it comes. It stems from just a just a long just a long. It, it it didn't just start right away. It started from when I was younger. Um, I had already been a, always been a mischief youth, always was curious about things and always was lost. Um, I had lost my mother at four, so that brought a void. And um, my siblings, um, I'm the only one with a different father. So when my mother passed, they left, went with their father. Uh, mm. No, I found out now nobody really wanted me, so I went with my grandmother who was uh, like in her 60s at that time. And I was four years old. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you can only imagine the divide and in, in, in how the raising come, which now I really appreciate what she did. But however, um, uh, so, so beginning to cope, uh, how I realized how important words are and that we speak, uh, I agree with Vince a lot on what he was speaking about. Um, how. Uh, how uh, words are very important. I can remember sitting down with uh, African-American principal at like 12 uh, uh, years old. And he told me I wouldn't live to get 16. Mm. Um, after that, my life just went down. Uh, mm. Now I can look back since I understand energy. I know that he spoke that and I took it in. That just broke my spirit. Uh, so my life just went out of control at that time, you know, um, drinking, uh, smoking weed at that, at that young age, uh, had a kid at uh, 14, knew nothing, knew nothing about uh, being a father. I was just a kid myself, uh, ended up signing over rights to my daughter, which we reunited now, which is, which is a good thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, end up giving up rights to my daughter. So it was a lot of trauma, a lot of trauma there. 
which led my life to just spiraling out of control at the hands of our community. You know, it wasn't that older guy that said, look, man, this isn't the right way to go. You need to go to school and get it together. Instead, they embraced my behavior. Hmm. And so I don't know whether to blame them or they just didn't know better. But however, I became a product of my environment. I mean, to make a long story short, and we hear this urban tale a lot about how, you know, um, the wrong, the wrong crowd and, and the influence, but really it's the adults. It was an adult that gave me my first beer. It was an adult that gave me my first joint. It was an adult that gave that 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 put dope in my hand. These was all adults that knew that I was supposed to be in school. And which I see now, not much have changed. These adults are the OGs who they who, who the people looking up to. You know, they done been to prison but can't tell a young man, look, that's not the route to go. I've been there, so I changed, you know, want to change my life. Versus they want to glamorize it. I done been locked up. It, it, it's nothing to glamorize. And we, we live in a culture where we celebrate prison versus someone graduating from college. <laughs> we celebrate Jeezy versus Robert Smith. You know, that, that's, that's the disconnect we, we have here in our culture. That's why I said that this is moving up to why I said that I'm exhausted from mentoring the youth. It's exhausting. You break through, then you got, um, you know, I don't like to bring celebrities in it. Then you have someone like, you, you give them pride. Then you have someone like Kanye West saying slavery was a choice. So all this you pour into them about how their ancestors fought, you know, to get them where they at. Now, if somebody will, 20 times your influence telling them that they could have fought harder. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like a lot of levels to this thing um, with the mentorship. And I just got burnt out by the, by the cause I, I, I mainly served uh, Lee County, which is Sanford, which is a, um, a, a, I would say kind of rural area, uh, which I felt like it was a need there for them to see something different. Uh, and it was just an uphill battle, man. It just it just exhausted me. I'm and familiar with Sam. I'm familiar yeah. with where my son's godparents lived then. And I I just saw the news. It's two. It was it was two people just got shot today there. And that's that's where we at now. That's why I said that that this that for me, I have gotten burnt out. <laughs> and tell us, tell us the reason why, why, why are you so burnt out? Tell us specifically the reason. Mentorship for one, um, the parents and a lot of the other nonprofit organizations, they, they began to make it seem like a competition. So are we competing or are we collaborating? Right. That part. <laughs> yes. All right. So we all want to have a fundraiser or an event on the same day. Why can't we just do it together? If we for the youth, who cares about the recognition? Who cares about the name of the organization? We are doing this for a cause. Mm -hmm. and, and I went into it spending my own money. And, uh, and I'm gonna be honest with you. I think the county officials and stuff probably thought I was arrogant, but I wasn't being arrogant because I wasn't actually for nothing. And um, some people I wouldn't collaborate such as, um, the people in charge who've been in that community all this time and didn't want to do anything uh, uh, for the community. Now you see someone who's on their own dime doing for the community. Uh, let me put it like this. This, this is very true, um, fellas. Uh, I had a cancer awareness event in that town. Do you know they came out there and took pictures of everybody that didn't look like us and posted it in the newspaper? And my assistant went, was did the interview. She looked like us. Her picture wasn't even in the interview. If you looked at the paper, you would think that it was that it um, was Hispanic or, or um, Caucasian that did it. 
but I'm okay without the accolades and, and, and stuff because I knew what I was doing it for. But however, I understand right then and there that it was gonna be an uphill battle. I mean, with the community, see, even the community was fighting against it. I could see if I went to the, uh, uh, to a chambers meeting and asked for funds and to do, you know, the, uh, uh, the events, but I was doing it on my own dime. I took so look. I took so much from the community at one point in time in my life. That's my only that 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 was my only way of giving back. That's why I began doing it because it made me feel human uh, by giving back. It just made me feel human, and I guess that was my redemption when I first started uh, the the, the um, nonprofit. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't really love of the youth or love of the community. It started out as a personal thing, of redemption. And I just and I just got a joy out of just seeing other people happy and just giving back. But then it turned into the youth. It's turned into the passion for the youth, which you know a lot of these parents. I know what's going on. I know if I come to your house. I know if you look high. I know what's going on in your house. Yeah. But, but if you see somebody pouring into your kid, can you just respect that? That this man, he taking his time out of his day, which is the most valuable resource we have is time. Out of his day, take up time doing something that his that nine times 10, his father didn't do, his uncle didn't do, his cousin, nobody else doing, trying to pour something different into him. Because exposure will change your life. It's a very good point. And everyone, everyone, this is just my opinion. <laughs> it's not law. It's just my opinion. Yeah. And I appreciate you sharing your opinion because again, that's what this is all about. And you said a lot of you said a lot of things. And Jen, from hearing your story before on the Speak Up and Inspire series, um, I know that you're coming from a place and you said it, redemption and joy and giving back from what you had previously, you know, taken, you know, when you were doing what you were doing. So now you're giving back and people are not always appreciative. And I think I talked to uh, Dwayne about, you know, the importance of trying to come together and collaborate with different organizations. But there's so many, so many organizations out here who are competing and they're not, they're no longer doing what they say that they're going to do in the community for the right reasons. They're competing with the next person um, and just, you know, Dwayne and I, we, we talk on a regular basis about, you know, getting together and doing things together and bringing our organizations together, but not all organizations do that or want to do that. Um, and it's a shame because there's so many resources out there. And if we just pull them all together, if we just pull them together and work together, we can make such a big impact. But unfortunately, there's a lot of people out here that are doing things for the wrong reasons. Um, so I appreciate you bringing that point out and also sharing, you know, what your passion is. But even as an educator, Dell, we're going to talk to you next. Even being an educator, you can get burnt out working in the school system, working with parents who don't care, working with parents who don't ever come to meetings, who don't care about the, the kids' grades. Uh, and, and you're right, letting them be home smoking cigarettes, smoking cigarettes, smoking weed, having sex in the house, you know, right under their roof, all that kind of, all that kind of stuff going on. Um, and so it, it's, it's really hard when you have people who are really genuinely wanting to, to pour into, into you. And especially with the youth, you have parents who just don't appreciate it, or they don't partner with you to help the children get where they need to be. And I know a lot of teachers who are burnt out because of that reason alone is that they don't get the support back from the parents when they're trying to do something to help the children. And it's a shame because the only the person that's gonna be affected and that's gonna have those effects is the youth. And they grow up and now they're, they, have, they have records, can't get jobs because of those records. They're in, in jail, they've been in prison, so forth and so on. And then we're trying to find the resources for them when they get out when a lot of things could have been avoided if we just would have put that time in, like Vincent said, putting that time in, putting our phones down. And I'm telling you, I'm guilty of that. I always got my phone in my hand, but I always make time to sit down and talk to my kids and all of us should. 
Um, so thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. Del, coming to you because you're an educator and um, you know you also have your personal story. So tell us your passions and where does it come from? Tell us the background of, of you and what your passions are. Um, the background was a pretty interesting story. I had a I had a my favorite English teacher, Miss Polovic. Shout out to her. Um, hope she's watching. Uh, she did a very interesting thing. She was a white woman in a, in, a, in a predominantly black school, and she she got all of us happy to read, eager to read, and also spell and also write. And that touched me in a way because she always had. 10 words on the board, we had to define them, spell them, use them in a sentence. So the biggest thing that you can do, especially as a black man, is have knowledge. Knowledge can take you further than anything. If you know, if you know words and know how to use those words, that can get you where you want to be. So as a, um, at first, when I went to college, I wanted to major in broadcast journalism because I wanted to be on TV. But of course, who's showing video these days? That's 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 over. That's the path. So in, 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 in acquiring that degree, I had to be around a bunch of English majors. So being an English major means they're going to go teach. So I became a product of that environment. So I got around with a lot of future teachers and I figured, oh, I can do the same thing. You know, I can I can tell people what's going on and um, try to get them in the right path. But I want to piggyback on what Dion said. The reason why he's burnt out is because we're seen as the enemy sometimes. We're on the positive side of things. We're on the positive spectrum. We, we want kids to grow and become productive citizens. And with that type of love that we're giving to them, they're not used to it. It's different, it's foreign, it's an alien. So we have to keep drilling and drilling and drilling every day until they finally get it. And some, and some get it and some get it well after graduation. Some get it well after they've gone and start experiencing life and some just don't get it until they come across a situation where they have to figure out and then they come back to then they come back to us sometime along the way and say hey you was right about everything you said so until until we we'll stop being seen as the enemy because there are kids that come to school and the first thing come out their mouth is I don't like school school ain't for me well who told you that who told you that school isn't for you because if it's not for you why are you here and when you're here you're actually doing the work some of the baddest kids we have are the smartest they know math. They can read. They can write. <laughs> you can do this. You, 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 you have great test scores. But somewhere along the way, they feel like being smart isn't cool anymore. You know, now you got to be the class clown. You got to be a person that don't know. You got to be a person that goes off on every adult. You got to be the, like, another thing is we're so quick to violence. We're so quick to get angry. If someone doesn't appeal to us or appeal to our ego or don't make us feel good, we quit to fight. We quit to argue. We quit to pick something up. And it's crazy how even adults that they're 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 quick to be defensive instead of hearing what that person is saying. We may come off brass. Sometimes I mess this baby off a little bit. I get where Dion comes from because I deal with it every single day. My delivery may not be the best at times, but once they, once I get them to calm down and listen to what I said, digest that, then they'll be like, oh, okay, yeah, I understand. Because the first thing people do is listen to respond. They don't listen to understand. Mm -hmm. They listen to, they, they, they hear what you say and they're ready to fire back at you. So then once you calm all that stuff down and actually explain it to them, this is what we do every day. If I didn't care about you, I wouldn't be here every day. There's plenty of people in the street that would never sit foot on this campus to help you in any, any shape, form, or fashion. So what we do is hard work. At the same time, it's a wonderful experience. You watch, you get to watch a kid grow from their ninth grade year to their senior year and then they graduate. And they come back and actually explain to you, yeah, I may have been rough around the edges, but now I see where you're coming from. Now I understand where you're coming from. And our jobs are hard. But graduation day is, is, is rewarding for a lot of us. We get to see that kid that, that people always told them they wouldn't be nothing. 
you know, we get the Dion's of the world where someone told them along the way that they wouldn't be anything. But they ran up on some other people and they got to and they got that kid to believe that they're going to be positive. And that kid got to the final step and now it's out here flourishing. So I would say we do get burnt out, but we still got to keep that fire blazing because who else is going to do it? We're the ones that's going to do it. We're the ones that have to reach out because people are so quick to write these kids off. People are too, people are, when I mentioned I work at a school, the first thing I come out of their mouth is I can't see how you do it. And it's, it's, it's I mean, we, you, or oh, you have to be a strong person to do that. You got to be a special person to do that. No, there's nothing special about it. You just got to be able to relate, understand where they come from, and try to and, and, and try to get them to see that there's a light at the end of a tunnel. Everyone, everyone is going through something. Every kill, every kill on our campus is going through something. But we're here to love them in a way that's gonna radiate throughout them for the rest of their lives. So the passion, the passion burns each and every day. And 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 the story is the same. But at the same time, you know, I get, I felt everything Dion said. It hit me to the core because I feel the same way sometimes. There's days I want to quit. There's days I don't want to come to work. There's days, I, there's days I want to take a mental day. But I feel if I don't show up, I'm failing somebody's child. Mm. So I'm there every day, even if I don't feel like it. I'm there. I'm smiling. I'm cracking jokes with them. But at the same time, they know, at least they should know by now, that we want them to succeed. That's at the end of the day. If I got to help you with this, if I got to help you with that, but I'm not going to be your crutch. <laughs> you can't come to me every day with the same problems. We got to find out some way, somehow to find solutions and actually help you be able to navigate this. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so I thank you for inviting me to this panel and I thank you for allowing me to meet these guys. And I feel like we're going to do a lot of good work out here in the community, no matter where it is. Yes. Yes, definitely, definitely. Um, I appreciate you you um, sharing your story and your passion, um, especially what you do in the schools. I know that there's been a couple of times you and I have uh, connected um, and you've been at the schools and I can hear your students that have this huge respect for you especially when you were going through your health crisis. Um, yeah. the, the respect that your students and the love that your students have for you shows your commitment to your students. Um, and you've been on this, you were on the Speak, in, Speak Up and Inspire uh, series with us when we were talking to teachers about their work in the community and being teachers and so forth. And it shows. I've heard it on the phone. I've heard the respect. I've heard the, you know, them, them calling you Mr. They're not calling you out your name. They're not cussing. They speak to you with respect. And I've, I've heard your interactions with the students. So I know that you're making a great impact. So um, thank you for sharing that. And um, yes, we're about to make some moves, um, Kings. We're about to make some moves. I'm telling y'all, this is about to be, this is about to be some. I'm telling y'all, it's about to be some. And it's going to be all about y'all. So, <laughs> um, Dwayne, I, I brought you up and um, I want it for you. I would like for you to share with us the work that you do in the community because it's really unique. As um, a domestic violence advocate myself and as a domestic violence survivor myself, um, I connected with you um, because you were a man who is in this fight. You were in. You are a man that is also a domestic violence advocate, which is so important because when we think of victims, we always think of women, but we never think of men being victims. And we don't see a lot of um, men that are advocates in the community as you know fighting against or trying to raise awareness about domestic violence. So you um, definitely have, I always reach out to you when I have domestic violence related um, topics going on, events, just collaborating with you. Um, and you do the same with me, which I appreciate so much. And you wrote a book about it that was very easy for people to understand. It wasn't a whole bunch of legal jargon. It wasn't a whole bunch of, you know, words in there that nobody, it was written for someone that even an advocate can understand and be able to give to a victim or give to a, a, a sister, a family member, um, you know, a survivor, anybody 
can read your book and be able to understand the effects of domestic violence. And um, I appreciate that. That's one thing I respect about you um, as a man out here being an advocate. I know that you do other things, but that is how we, you and I were connected. So um, please share with us your passions and what's behind it. What's the background behind what it is that you do? Well, my passion is, just like you said, is it is domestic violence. Um, it's domestic violence for one reason, or it could be 50 reasons. Um, but it just depends on, you know, um, what's going on. Um, I picked domestic violence because, you know, my personal story is I've been married four times. Um, and each one of my wives have had an experience of domestic violence with a, with a previous um, lover or a previous relationship. And it wasn't one, it wasn't women that I was going out and seeking, um, going after and stuff like that. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, my my current marriage, I actually, I actually had to take a step back because she told me that she was a survivor of domestic violence. And I had, before I got with her, um, the type of relationships that I had, I had sworn off anyone that had been in a domestic violence relationship because the relationship was so toxic and so they weren't healed from it. So I was just like, nope, not dating anybody else. But I found a woman that was healed from it, uh, which made a difference. Uh, I found someone that was so so far removed from her domestic violence situation, her issues, uh, that it didn't affect her anymore. So when I say that four times, it's been it's really been three times, and four times was the last one. But I love advocating for domestic violence because domestic violence you uncover so many other things with it. Um, before the, before the actual event of domestic violence, after after that, you uncover that it's been an abusive relationship. After you find out that it's been an abusive relationship, you might find generational curses that's in there. So there's a lot of things that's, that that domestic violence spider into. Like I said, one thing when I came online, I said I advocate for homelessness. Thirty five percent of people that are homeless are homeless because of domestic violence. Domestic violence also causes mental illness. One of the things I advocate is for mental health. You see a lot of people that goes through, they go through, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder, suicide, depressions. So yeah, I advocate for that because I want a better, but I want you in a better mental health, a better mental space once you get out of that relationship. Um, I want you to be, I want you to be healed from it because if you're not healed, you're gonna bleed all over somebody else. Someone was detected as you walked. You're gonna bleed all over somebody else. So I, I want that. Um, when it comes to domestic violence, I also had the, um, the opportunity to actually you know, talk about abusive relationships. And that gives me a chance to mentor because one of the things that I talk about too is like I said, generational curses. Generational curses are something that happens over family history. So you may not see, you may have seen that your, your mother or your father were in a domestic violence relationship. And that's how you think that, that uh, a relationship is supposed to act. So that's me trying to mentor and get to that before that. Um, also, when it comes to domestic violence, I also have the chance to reach out to other men because a lot of men don't talk about domestic violence. A lot of men don't talk about that they've been um, a victim or survivor of domestic violence or that they've seen it and it's changed their lives. Um, some men don't know how to, how to convey their emotions um, once they're angry. Some men don't know how to convey that, that they're actually in danger. Um, one of the things I say, you know, I'm a pretty big guy, um, but there are a whole bunch of bigger guys that's me and, and that's buried. That's dead now because they didn't take domestic violence and abuse relationships seriously. So it gives me so much opportunity to actually, to actually spider into other things, to actually talk about other things, to actually advocate for other things in our community. One of the most uh, telling things um, I found when I was doing a tribute for uh, people that passed away from domestic violence is that I saw that there was a four-year-old that was a victim of domestic violence. And I was like, because uh, I was taking the names down right now, you know, date of birth, you know, when they passed, and it was a four-year-old. So I did research on it and found out that the four-year-old was the victim because the, the, the father of him, uh, abused the mother and killed everybody else in the household. Oh, wow. So, 
you you see stuff like that. And I also saw once I, when I was doing that tribute that there was someone that was 87 that was a victim of domestic violence. So it's just not a certain group of people. It's just not a certain category of people. It's just not a certain color of people. It's just not a certain race. But domestic violence has, uh, has, it doesn't discriminate. It can affect any and everybody. So when I advocate, I'm really advocating for any and everybody that's in my community. Yes, yes, yes. Um, your book, um, I want to make sure that I get a copy of your book to everybody on the panel um, because we know that October is domestic violence um, month. So we're going to be talking about it in that month, um, specifically to uh, men that are victims of domestic violence. And I want to just go ahead and put out there now, and I know that uh, Dwayne can back me up on this, is that men being victims of domestic violence, that doesn't mean that they're gay. It doesn't mean that they're weak. It doesn't mean that um, they're, they, they look or are inferior or or less than a man because they've been a victim um but women can be, they don't have that that show snap for nothing women can be violent they can be murderous they can be so many things um they can they oh, will not kill interrupt you. not interrupt you <laughs> tiffany not interrupt yeah. one of i'll say this you, you brought it up one of my that one of the most hated episodes of snap is I, one that i saw and short and sweet of it is there was this whole relationship about this 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 couple that got together, young couple, 22, 23, 22, 23. And they were moving in together and stuff like that, moving in together. And the day that they were moving in together, um, they got into an argument. Um, it was her birth, it was her birthday, and they were also moving in together. Um, the guy decided to help her cousin move, and they had an argument. So he comes out, he comes out to his car. Tells his cousin that he'd been stabbed. Said he'd been stabbed. Took him to the hospital. Guy died. They went back and reviewed everything that was in there. She took the cake. She took the knife that was cutting for her birthday cake and she killed him with it. Killed him with it. And um, ruined her life because she was actually in school for, for to be a lawyer and killed him. Um, destroyed two families. Two families. Mm. So... Like I said, that's one of the reasons I stopped watching Snap because of just that instance. But like you said, it doesn't mean you you being a survivor or a victim of domestic violence doesn't mean that you're weak. It just means that you're you've been in an abusive relationship. Everybody's not everybody, but anybody can be in an abusive relationship. It doesn't determine who you are as a man or your manhood at all. Yes. Yes. Yep. And that was the point I was getting to. Uh, a lot of men don't speak up because. They're, they're worried about the perception of other people um, and just want to make that very well known that just because you're a man and you're in a domestic violence um, situation or relationship does not mean that you're less of a man, it does not mean that you're a weaker, weak man. It means that you're in a domestic violence relationship and women can be just as toxic, just as harmful um, as men. Um, so uh, I, I thank you for... Uh, stamping that for me, <laughs> Dwayne, because I think it's really important that men hear that. Um, and hopefully when we try to put that episode together in October, we'll have men that are willing to share their story about being victims of um, domestic violence. Um, JT, tell us your passions and tell us where it comes from. How, where, what's the background behind your passions? Well, <clears throat> I'm listening to, uh, you know, other kings and brothers on this panel touch on a lot of things that you see every day. My passion comes from a different place because it's, it's, it's really centered around our people. I think about men in general, and I'm just going to lay it out here. The most, I think, the most disrespected group on the planet, men carry the burden of everything and <clears throat> not always being able to be transparent with how they feel because you're going to get categorized, you're going to get judged and you have to be in a made up mindset to not care about what the next person going to say, because you're thinking more about what you need to get out. 
And if you know what to say and how to say it and how to go about it, that within itself is one of the most powerful things that we can do as men. Being transparent, being honest, and being forthright with what is on our heart and our soul. I think about one other thing. The conversation that I have to have with my boys and, and having to tell them that even if you go about everything the right way, it still can go wrong. And it's not even, we're not even living in 1960. We're living in the 2000s and we still having these conversations. And it's not, it's not cats that's under hoods. It's cats that's under the shield and cats that's, you know, got titles that we under attack. And so this table, this, this king's table that we have, this is what they don't want to see. Unity, positivity. Not just sitting and just talking, but resolution. Mm -hmm. Coming up with the solutions to resolve what's going on in our community. Standing together, being powerful, being strong. Stepping out on that faith and saying, look, I'm here, I'm accounted for, I'm present. Now, whatever needs to happen after that, I take full responsibility for that. And it ain't got nothing to do with these right here. Got everything to do with this and this. And how you made up, how you designed. My passion hits different because I'm thinking about us, where we've come from, the oppression that has, has, has came. And yeah, it's a little mind boggling why we not only are attacked by other entities, but we are attacking each other. Now, where, where and why, that's a whole nother show within itself. But I'll tell you this. We go through stuff, they title stuff depressed, but depression. Let me give you, let me give you something, Tiffany, that you can put out there in the atmosphere that might even bring a little tear. I'm gonna tell you this. God gave us the design to be able to rearrange some things. And depression is one word that we can rearrange. And I'm gonna tell you how us kings get through this life. We took the words in depression. And we mixed it up and we said, look, we as men, we as kings, I press on. We took it, we formulated it, we made it our own. There ain't a man that's on this panel that ain't stepped out, you know what I'm saying? And, and didn't always have people standing, standing right beside them. But I'm telling each of my kings on this panel, in JT, you got a man that's standing up and gonna stand beside you on the front line. I ain't bagging up on nobody's back line. We done had enough people sitting in the back seat, the back row. We on the front line and we ready to get this thing. And I'm here for it all. I want all the smoke. I want all the resolution. And we moving forward. And I'm with you. We walking in power and strength. Yes. I dig that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> March on with my fist in the air. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow. I, yes. I felt all that. And I'm not even a king. I'm just a queen here, just admiring all y'all, making making great moves. <laughs> yes. I love it. I love I wanna, it. I want to come off on something you said earlier, Tiffany, when you said it's about us as kings. We don't really want any credit. We'll see credit when we see change. And that's what we, and, and I think I can speak for all the men that says, you know, we, we, we'll, get our, we'll get our pass on the back when we see the change occurring. But until then, it's a lot of work to do and it takes all of us, you know, to, to, to make it happen. I think yeah. somehow, some way, a lot of us gonna have to really put our lives on the line for this. Because it seems like throughout history, when someone of this color, especially a man, tries to assemble his people, it's looked at, it's looked upon as him being a devil or being negative or being someone who's causing an uprising. And all we want is and all we want is just a piece of the American dream just like everybody else. Yep. We want to we want to be able to have everything that everyone else has. But why? Why do we have to jump through extra hoops just for us to be successful? 
Why, when it comes to a bank loan, you know, we get the 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 nose. Why, when it comes to buying a car, or buying a house, getting education, it has to be an uphill battle. You know, every it seems like every day now they're trying harder and harder to to place some type of negative entity on us. Why? Because we're having more black men in the household now. There are more fathers now than ever before. Guys who are stepping up, taking care of their kids, taking care of somebody else's kids. It's not we take care of somebody else's kids. We, we're, we're around and they don't like that. So they try to so they try to figure out somehow, some way to make us angry, to take us off our square so that way they can have us right where they want us. I mean, you have people that want to call us the N-word only because they want, us to, they want us to get out of character. They're building more and more jails every day. And that's where they want us to be. So for us to come together and do this right now, you know, we're, we're, we're basically putting our lives on the line so that way we can build our people. Somebody got to do it. They got to start somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You. Um, you said on your square, are you a traveler? No. <laughs> okay. All right. But I've heard that before. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. No, I was just curious. Yeah. So if there was one thing that you could change, if there's a, a mission, a mission for you this year, a goal that you want to accomplish as a, as a king, as a man in your community, what is something that you would like to accomplish this year? for your community? And that's for anybody to answer. Well, I would already say I'm already started. I've already started my goal. And, and that started April 21st, 20, 2021, when I got my kidney. I just want to live in, I just want to, I just want to live in the purpose that was given to me. And try to help as many people on the way discover their purpose too. If I can, if I can just reach one, like we started off this this podcast night, we can just reach one, discover their purpose, and walk in their purpose. I, we we don't need like uh, let my man say we don't need the credit. Vincent said we don't need the credit, as long as that person is walking in their purpose and we walk in our purpose. We get more people walking in their purpose, then we'll start to see that change. Yes. Anybody else? Yeah, it's one enough. Goal. It's enough credits. It's enough credits rolling on the movie screen. Enough people looking for accolades and headlines. This right here is a movement that is powerful and it moves, it moves on another level. It ain't looking for, you know what I'm saying, um, what how they want want us to look. We ain't even reacting how you how how we categorize, we breaking the stigma. That's the biggest thing of this thing. We hitting them with something that they ain't expecting. You got all intelligent kings here on this panel that can move and apply, apply pressure just by your action. That right there are steps that, you know what I'm saying, that shake the walls without there being an earthquake. It moves mountains without even having to shake because it's moving and coming from a different place, truly. Well, Tiffany, right now, I want to hear from my man, Jay Locke, because I, I know this brother. I, I done had conversations with this brother. And I know how deep this brother can come. So I want to know, you know, from him, his answer, what's 2023 hold as far as the movement from your uh, view, my brother? Well, before we go to, to Jay, uh, JT, did you give us your goal? You told me what you wanted to accomplish. You told me, <clears throat> did you tell us what your goal was? It's moving as a unit in strength, unity, and love, and not walking my sight, but walking my faith. And understanding that the moment that we take these steps are the moments that we take in the action are the moments that we're moving souls and saving the lives of the people that need to be saved and bringing them closer to where they need to be, meaning positivity and strength. And what each of these kings hold is what we can saturate the atmosphere with and bring a whole nother movement that's different. It's going to hit different because what you expect and how you think it's going to feel is not actually what you're going to get. You're going to get something that you ain't even going to be able to speak on. You're just going to feel it in your soul and then you're going to react off the power of the movement because the movement comes from a different place. 
is not man-made. Trust me. It's something, it's on a whole nother level. And it has nothing to do with, you know what I'm saying? Again, doing none of this stuff for headline is doing it to save a generation and a people that you that suppressed and lost and confused. All we got to do is put ourselves in the midst and in the gap and show people that this is what you want to be and this is how you want to move. And watch the domino effect. Tap, tap someone, tell someone, hit one person, and it's like a domino. Boom. We got the world. We got what we want. Spread knowledge. Spread love. Nice. nice. <laughs> Jay, he, he, he called you out, so it's on you. What's your goal? What's your goal for this year? What you want to accomplish this year for your community? That's my guy right there. Uh, <laughs> for me, man, it's, it's, it's just a couple of things that I want to achieve. Um, I think when you talk about um, us moving as a family, as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a group of people, I think it's important that we, I think the initial fight, and I hear people talking about it on the panel, it's, it's the family structure. Like that has to be, that's the only thing that we haven't really tried you know, um, you know, we've done the marches, we've done the, we've done the protests, we've done the, you know, the bus boycotting and all of those, and those things got um, some levels of success. But I think when you look at collectively for all of us, um, no matter the education background, no matter the, um, the, um, the money that you're making, I think that is what we have to attack that family structure. I think it was it's been systematically put into um, put in design in a way that has kept us separated. You know, um, if you need government assistance, then the man has to be on child support, regardless of if he is in the home or not. Um, I just think that should be something that we really focus on and, and really look at um, everyone. Um, I also think um, me personally looking at on, on the business aspect, um, fighting back from corporate bullies, it, like, you know, my, my guy was talking about the banks and not wanting to give us loans um, or being in a position where you have a business and, you know, people on the other side of that spectrum can kind of dictate your success. Um, so I'm definitely looking to, um, I'm looking for the smoke, like JT said, but, <laughs> you know, I, I'm looking for the smoke in a sense of, okay, you got to go. At some point, you just got to go and just hit the biggest guy, aka corporation in the mouth and say, okay, let's get it. Because um, the impact that we make as an individual should affect others around you or the, the one that comes after you. Like, if you make enough noise, um, you should be able to help affect and, 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 and make someone that's coming after you have to work less, you know? Um, so I'm always looking at that. And I think I hear people from different um, backgrounds who have different um, involvements and different passions, be it from the kids to domestic violence. We have to understand these are cultural battles. There's a system put in place and they work together in unison to keep us where we are. And, and when you understand that, you know, you hear the impact of music, you hear the impact of, but music is the culture. Whatever's moving in music is going, you're going to see it in your communities. You're going to see it in the minds of the people that are influenced. So we have to understand that. And it's hard to, it's hard to change somebody's mindset. That's like, <laughs> that's the hardest thing to do is to change somebody's mindset. Um, prayer does work, but we also, the same way that machine works 
in unison, we have to work in unison. That means the musicians, the educators, the philosophers, the, the mental health um, providers, like everyone has to be working on the same page. And um, that has been part of the reason why we've seen minimum success in this day and time. During the 70s, when it was like, um, when James Brown was rocking, I'm black and I'm proud, everybody was on one accord. That's why the success that it had. But like my man said, they killed your leaders. And, and it, it, it can't be, um, you, can't, you can't make any real impact and not expect some type of backlash. So keep that in mind, brothers and sisters that's out there listening. That's, you might be that sacrifice. Right, right. Um, Vincent. Would you like to share your your goal for the year for your community? I would have to say the same as everyone else, you know. Um, continue to be a part of the solution, you know. Don't have to make national headlines, you know, hell, even local headlines. If you know that you impacted someone's life. I'm a foster parent, you know. Um, We've had children coming in and out of our house, you know, and I'm not going to lie to you. Um, that takes a special person to do. And you get attached. You really get attached. I cry when these children leave because I know where they're coming from. Potentially where they're going back to. And uh, just being a part of the solution one day, it, it, it may not hit now. It could be Years from now, when that one child said, you know what, my mom wasn't there, I didn't have really, my dad and uncles, but I had this one guy who dropped a piece of knowledge on me, and it made a difference. I chose not to rob that store that day. You know, I chose to, as hard as it is, just kind of swallow it and say, you know what, another day. And... Just stay the course, you know. Um, my son is my main mission. I can't help anyone else if I'm not available to the seed in my own home, you know. And he, for me, is my project everything. So if I had a personal goal for me is to see him get himself back on track and reach that reachable goal that we set for his grades. And anything outside of that, you know, Continue to, when I'm at the gym and I see some kids playing basketball, hey man, how was your grades? What's going on at school, you know? Be there and, and just teach one, you know? Uh, I could be at any one of you guys' homes and just, just have a chat with your kid, you know? Hey man, you know, you got it. I know your father's on you. We, we all care. We all love you. You got it, you know? Just continue to be that that, 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 that solution, you know, because again, we all know the problems. Talk is cheap. Like my man that had time, the revolution is now being televised. Let's get it. Let's get it. That's my yeah. whole, that's my, my, my thing for this year. Let's get it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Dell, would you like to share your goal for the year for the community? Well, I already shared mine. Oh, you did. You did. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was, and I said, Del. I meant Dion. Dion, um, can you share what your goal would be this year or is this year? Well, my goal is to simply just grow spiritually, mentally, financially, because I realize that you can help more people with resources, because this is what a lot of these people need is resources. That's the lack of resources. It's causing a lot of these problems and situations we see, uh, like JT, J Locke, and everybody mentioned. Um, family, families are divided because of that one thing: resources. A lot mm -hmm. of them are divided. So, um, mm -hmm. and to grow my passion back to help the youth, uh, that's something I have to work towards. Uh, I feel like I don't want to do anything halfway. Because that's somebody's life that you're juggling with. And I'm not going to do it just for the cameras or just, just to say that I do it. 
uh, that's how I can come and say, well, I have no passion for doing it at this point because I'm burnt out. Um, so I'm very transparent in that aspect of things. But then um, I'm a quote junkie, um, fellas. Um, <laughs> I just like reading quotes uh, a lot. Um, and a lot of what we've been talking about it's like a quote from MLK. It was a hard quote. It was uh, that that he stated that um, we die the second we become silent about things that matter, and um, that's what we all getting at right here is about the things that matter. But you have to be fully functionally, mentally, and spiritually to even yeah. think about attacking a situation. So. Um, that's my goal, to grow spiritually, mentally, and financially. Yes, yes. Um, I really like the fact that you're able to admit to yourself that you got burnt out and that you need to work on these things so that you can get back to your passion. Um, because a lot of people will just keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. And I know I'm guilty of that too. They just keep pushing to the point where they break or snap or something and it's hard for them to come back from it because they didn't take that time to pour into themselves and to reset and to focus on themselves give themselves that self-care that self-love that self-awareness those self things and to do that is not selfish to give back to yourself is not selfish to rejuvenate yourself to to give yourself that time to be able to work on yourself is a sign of strength. Um, and it's a sign that you are aware of who you are and what your needs are. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and so I appreciate you being able to be transparent and share that because that can be hard for some people to admit, you know what, I got burnt out. I need to, I need to work on me right now. Some people won't do that. Um, and so that says a lot about you as, as a man, um, as a leader, um, and just as an individual to be able to admit that you got burnt out and I need to work on me. I need to work on my spirituality, my, my mental, you know, financial, I need to work on all of that stuff. And that, that says a lot about you as a man. So I really, I respect that. Um, and appreciate you sharing that, um, because not everybody can do that. Um, so I think one thing that we're seeing on this panel is the strength and the fact that you can be transparent and that you can open and share who you are and your strengths, but then also understanding that all of us are imperfect and we all have weaknesses at some point and that we can not only work on ourselves, but we have, well, that we have to start with ourselves. And just like Jay said, being starting in the family, starting in the home, that is the foundation for everything is starting in your home. Because if your home is not right, how can you give to somebody else? Like Vincent said, you know, if your own child is, is going crazy and out there committing crimes and all this stuff, how can you go out in the community and help another young man or another young lady when your home is not right? Like Vincent said, and that, that, that is that another sign of strength, another sign of, you know, checking in with yourself and being able to recognize that I need to work on me. I need to work on my family. I need to work on my foundation because if we had more people that focused on their family and focused on their home and not worry about everybody else, but focus on their home first and focus on their self first and focused on their own children, then so many things, there, a lot of things would be eliminated because now the children feel loved, they feel cared for, they feel supported. They have those the, that those parents who are pouring into them. They're putting their phones down. They're taking time to have dinner with them and to talk to them and find out about the day. They're in the schools. They're talking to the teachers. So many things happen when you start at home, when you start at the foundation. So um, y'all are bringing out some amazing, amazing points, and I'm so I'm so glad that um, we have brought the, the, the king's table back because um, so many things are coming out just, just in this hour and a half that we've been on right now. Um, Dwayne, tell us, last but not least, what is your goal? What is your goal for the year for the community? Um, before I tell you my goal, I wanna just reach out to Dion to say this. Sometimes, man, you before you get burned out, 
um, you got to take a step back. Um, I, I myself after October, I don't do any more advocating on any more domestic violence. Um, I, I, because you can't, you can't pour yourself into, and then you have nothing left, left for yourself. Um, so I take a step back. You might just need to take a step back every now and then and be like, Hey, this is my time. This is my take a month. I don't come back until advocating until about January or February from October until January to February. I take off during that time. So it's not, I, I may be working in the background, but I'm not as publicly working as I was, you know, from February or January until October. So just, just take, keep that in mind before you can pour out to other people, you have to leave some self, you have to leave something in the tank for yourself. Um, but Tiffany speaks on self-care all the time. Self-care <laughs> is the best care. Uh, I think I remember she even said that, put it on post for self-care is the best care. But yeah, man, I mean, that's, that's what you got to do. You got to leave something in the tank for you, man. Um, I would, uh, I would advocate and advise you of that because like I said, me being a domestic violence advocate, you can't look at that stuff all the time and take it in. You, you, you thanks, become, thanks a, sometimes you become an empath, you become an empath. So you feel everything that everybody else is feeling. And yeah, sometimes you don't have no outlet for it. That's just like a prison guard. They, they're a prisoner for like that uh, 12 hours or eight hours that they're working in the prison. Mm -hmm. That's the same with dealing with these youth. You dealing with that mentality for um, four to five hours and you start looking at, I personally start feeling like an after care uh, person. Like I was just after care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, after yeah. a while. Um, and know, know that you're not alone. A I mean. lot of people feel that way. A lot of advocates feel that way. A lot of teachers, educators, and you know, people that are passionate about youth and family, a lot of, that's why there's so many conversations about burnout and mental health and self-care and so forth, because it happens. And I do the same thing, Dwayne. After October, between April and October are my busiest times for advocating. And I take a break, usually November, December, and until my birthday. So you have to take time for yourself. You really do, because you can get burnt out constantly giving and giving and giving and giving and giving and especially when you don't when people don't appreciate it mm -hmm. <laughs> you might have out of 10 people maybe two might truly appreciate it um so yeah it's easy to get it's it's very easy to get burnt out so you're not alone you are not alone i've taken breaks i took a, a two-year break coming back and doing um a podcast again because it can it can be exhausting giving 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 um and you're not giving to yourself so yes yes Dwayne tell us your goal we don't want to um, forget about your goal for the <laughs> my goal for 2023 is just to make a better community and I understand that my community is not just my neighborhood it's just not the county that I live in it's just not the city I live in it's not even the state that I live in uh, my community is anytime I go somewhere and I see injustice or anything like that. Um, I love advocating. Um, I love um, reaching out to people who are um, oppressed. So that's that's my goal is to, to, to make a better community. And I know that in order to make a better community, I need a village. So I do I do love reaching out. I do love working on things with other other people. Um, uh, take for instance, Dion. Me and Dion, we worked on a couple of things. Um, before. Um, he's given me good advice. Um, I've uh, been on panels with uh, Jay Locke and JT up here. Uh, and I know these are good brothers. These, this, this is, it, 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 if I needed some advice and I really wanted to talk to somebody, I can get some advice from Jay, from Jay Locke. I can get some from JT. I can get some from DR. I know those brothers, I know those brothers pretty good. Like I said, we've done, and, Tiff, and you too, Tiffany. Uh, Tiffany, there's nothing that you haven't said that I haven't I haven't turned down. When you were like, okay, I need you to do this, da 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 da. I'm like, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. So yeah. it's it's about networking. It's about making a better community. It's about making a better place for everybody. So that's that's my goal for 2023. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Vincent. You were saying something. It's been many times, and I've had to get on Tiffany. Sit down. <laughs> you have. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Dell. Dell's doing the same thing. Yes, I've done that. <laughs> yes. yes. Sometimes we all we all and and we could tell ourselves that. Sometimes it, it takes others to sit others to see it and say it to us. I'd rather you guys say it to me versus my body shutting down on me for me being just exhausted or getting burnt out, whatever the case may be, because it's needed. You got to take care of yourself before we can take care of others. Yes. 
I am so proud of the our King's Table. Um, J-Lock, I um, had you as a as a special guest, but I, I think I, I think you need just we just need to go ahead and make you a, a permanent uh, member at the King's Table at the King's Table because uh, you just been called on and called out a couple times. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm really really proud of um, all of you. I know all of you in some way, shape, or form, whether it's whether it's business, personal. Um, I have two Godfathers on here. Uh, Vincent is Godfather of, of ZZ, and and Dell is Godfather of my twins. So these are some good men on here. I know all of y'all in different ways. Um, and I'm, I'm very proud of beginning of the King's Table because I'm already getting messages. When can I be on? When can I get on? So we're going to have more that are going to join us. And it's all about networking. It's all about connecting, um, all about, you know, coming together as a community. And me as a woman, I don't understand everything that y'all go through. And I thought that's why I thought it was important to bring the, the men's panel back. I don't know what y'all go through. I'm a woman. I don't know nothing about being a man. With my son, I call on a village, like with Dell and Vincent. Um, uh, J-Lock, I've talked to you a couple times, you know, just about, you know, my son. JT, I talked to you about some family dynamics to, you know, kind of get feedback from a man's perspective. Because as a woman, I can't raise my son without men around and having that insight because I don't know I can't raise him to be a man. I can raise him to be the man that I would like him to be, but I can't raise him to be a man. Other men can do that. And it takes a village to be able to do that, like Dwayne said. Um, and so this is, the, this is the beginning of the, of the PR village and the, on the king's table. This is not just the, the men's table, this is the king's table because y'all, y'all, you y'all do take on a lot on your shoulders. And as a woman, I recognize that. And I feel like y'all need to have a platform to be able to voice yourselves. Yes, Jay. Well, I'd like to um, give you a shout out and say thank you for inviting me, first of all. But um, you put this together. So um, that's impactful because there's other women that's watching that's got their pads out and taking notes and kind of um, taking this information back to their households and kind of seeing how to help their kids. So you are the reason for that. So thank you for having me. That's a blessing. I appreciate that. And yes. shout out to my guys. I do know a few of you, um, some I just met today. So nice to be in touch with my guys. I haven't talked to anybody in 2023. So this is actually pretty cool to kind of see everybody's well and doing good and um, still keeping the, keeping the movement strong. Yes. Yes, um, we have gone over our time, but we always do. So I don't think anyone yeah. minds that, um, but <laughs> we always do. We never finish on time, um, but I, I really appreciate everyone. Um, I have made some amazing notes, which I will share with y'all if y'all would like to um, to see what my notes were. Um, but I, yeah. I really, really appreciate um, everyone. And we are going to be back. We're going to be back every um, every third Monday of the month. Um, I know that not all of y'all might be able to attend every single one, but I appreciate when you can and you take out the time to do so. Um, I have a feeling we're gonna have a couple more people um, joining us next month. Um, I wanna put out there that even though our panel tonight is all African-American strong black men, I invite every man out there that is a community leader, that is a father, that is a husband, um, that is a professional, that's a business owner. We need representation from men from different ages, different races, different backgrounds to be at the king's table because y'all are men. And all men, you have an influence on your community and you are the head of your families and your households, no matter what your color is and no matter where you're from. So just because you see all brown faces tonight, that is not what this is about. It is about strengthening our culture as African-Americans and minorities not taking that away from the Kings here tonight because our community is in crisis. But I can also say that every community 
is in crisis right now, especially when it comes to our kids. Our kids are very open-minded these days. So a lot of kids nowadays don't see color, which is a good thing. So it's not just African American youth, it is, you know, Latino youth, Spanish youth, um, Caucasian youth. All of our youth are in trouble right now, regardless of race, because our children nowadays are more open to other races and they are not as prejudiced and biased as our generation may have been at this rate. And I'm pretty sure Dell can co-sign for this. And you know, if you work with children, Dion, I'm sure that you see it all the time. The children these days don't see as much as much of the color as they did in our generation. So all of our youths are in trouble right now. All of our youths need our help and all of our youths need strong men to lead them. All youths. Um, and all communities are in trouble because just because we might have a black community on one block and then the next block is a white community, if we are side by side, then we are all in trouble because we are all, we, we all affect one another in some way, shape or form, form, regardless of color. So I invite everyone, regardless, all men, regardless of your race, please, please, please reach out to me if you would like to be on in on or at the table um, even if you want to be a business spotlight if you want to be a special guest please 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 reach out to me because this is about the kings in our community all kings in our community <laughs> and i just want to tell y'all that i appreciate you very quickly very quickly because i think it's important dell where are you located i'm in columbia south carolina thank you vincent where are you located charlotte north carolina Thank you. JT, where are you located? Rock Hill, South Carolina. Thank you. Dwayne Hennett, where are you? Durham, North Carolina. Thank you. J Lock. Raleigh, North Carolina. Thank you. And Dion, where are you from? Or where you reside? Clayton, North Carolina. Nice. Hey, I'm from Wilmington, man. <laughs> nice. Born, born raised in Wilmington. All right. So that's the other thing. We're in North Carolina, South Carolina. We need some more people from right. different states so we can have some more perspectives of other cities and other states so that we can we can we can make this a universal movement, not just North Carolina, South Carolina. So thank you everyone for coming on tonight. Thank you to my kings that are sitting at the table tonight. I look forward to seeing you again. Our next um, King's table is going to be on um, March 20th. And we're going to be hitting on some of these goals and some of our the passions that were expressed tonight. Can so, we drop all of our socials? Yes, yes. I'm sorry. Yes, Dell. Um, start us off. Where can we find you on social media? On Facebook, um, Dell Von Harlan, D E L V O N H A R L I N G. Um, everywhere else, DJ Shock eight hundred three, DJ S H O K O three. I'm trying to build up my TikTok, so hit my TikTok. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, hit me up those places. Thank you so much. Um, Vincent, tell everybody how they can find you. You can find me at Baldwin's, B-A-L-D-W-I-N-S underscore touch underscore media on IG. Thank you. Thank you. Um, JT, tell us how they can find you. All right. On the IG, it's JT underscore Big Blue Radio. On Facebook, is James Sherman Thompson, the government man, keeping it simple. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Dwayne, tell us how we can find you. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook on the C. Dwayne Hennett. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn, C. Dwayne Hennett um, as well. Thank you so much. j -Lock, tell us how we can find you. Um, IG, TikTok, um, Facebook, we could do Alpha by j -Lock. Um, We got some big things coming. Um, and j -Lock, SMG on TikTok and IG, and I have new music coming out this year. So I'm excited. It's been a little while since I dropped some new music. Mm -hmm. So we're going to flood it this year. I got about two or three projects we're going to put out. Um, so if you guys um, love good music, definitely check me out on all of Google Play, Tidal, um, iMusic, 
Um, yeah, under J Lock. New thank single you, out you. coming soon. Thank you. Thank you. I'm ready for that too. We've been talking about that too. <laughs> yeah. uh, Dion, Dion, um, let us know your social media before we get up. All right. Well, Facebook, Dion Wingate, D I O N. Uh, you can find me there um, on IG, Dion underscore Robin Hood underscore Wingate. And uh, my website, FNO, the number four, life.com. Uh, that's where you can see some of the things that I do uh, throughout my website. So, um, J Lock, what genre of music do you, do you um, perform? It's it's a hybrid it's a hybrid between hip hop gospel and um, neo soul. We call it hip gospel, but I actually have a live band as well. So when we do doing concerts, we do live. Sort of like uh, like that Jay Dilla vibe type. Uh, Jay Dilla, yeah, uh, it, it gets vibe and yeah, kind of like that. But we got. It's you have to listen. It's, it's a different sound. It's kind of hibernation, everything. Like the new single, Grateful, has an Afro beat vibe to it, like an Afro um, soul record. So, can you leave a link in the in, in the chat? So, uh, in yes, the sir. I will do it. All right. Thank you so much. And I just promoted you, J Lock. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I said okay. I just promoted you. Leave it in the link. Leave it in the link. <laughs> I'm gonna actually send all of y'all the link to the live podcast because you got a lot of comments in there. So I want y'all to go to it and um, you know reply to people that have said um, some great things on the chat for the um, for the podcast tonight, and then also to drop your social media links because y'all were saying it too quick for me to get it. So <laughs> I'm gonna send you the direct link for y'all to go on there and drop your social media links. Thank you so much to my kings for coming on the very first um, PR Kings table. I appreciate all of you and um, sharing your passions, sharing your goals, sharing who you are, your backgrounds, being transparent and letting us know that you are here for it and you are ready to do this thing this year and beyond. Yes. I appreciate you. I got, I got one more thing to say. Um, yes. For the campaign for Alpha by j -Lock this year, um, we're doing the legacy campaign and we're going to have about 50 people come out um, dressed in white for the corporate shot. So I would love to invite all of you guys. I'll let you guys know the date and time. If y'all can make it, come down for the photo shoot. Um, certain it's going to go viral because we got some really influential, impactful people that's going to be a part of it. So, And you are a part of that circle. So I would definitely love to have you guys. If you can, if you can make it, come through thank you thank you um so you you don't have a choice now jay um i'm adding you as onto the king's table so just letting you know <laughs> no, no. so um thank you so much uh fellas for coming on tonight kings for coming on tonight and welcome to the king's table we will see you next month everyone have a good night jay can you stay on for a second thank you everyone have a good night Thank mm -hmm. you.